Cork last November. He outran the world half marathon champion Jeffrey uh, Camwador, who's uh, that was in Central Park. It was his first marathon win since Paris in 2012. And uh, really, he says it's all come from his increase in the, num the amount of endurance training he's done um, to cope better with the last five kilometers. And that will surely be tested here. Both of them still looking very comfortable. So just judging now, they'll be they'll be trying to decide now, you know, how am I going to get rid of this this person running next to me? Where am I going to put in the spurt? How, you know, how much effort am I going to take? I'll tell you what, Mara, the last year, Kip Choge, it was a subtle increase of pace. All of a sudden, he just drifted away. Yeah. And he's the sort of athlete that can do that. And you almost get the feeling that this is on the, the cusp of doing that right here. He's yeah. just moving away. Look at this. It's he's subtle. He's doing it as we it's speak. Subtle. It's yep. subtle. It's just, yep. it's just something that he did last year. Yep. And all of a sudden, he starts yep. to push away. And the gap just opens up a little bit. If, if the person you're running with is really, you know, at their limit, it doesn't take much to get a gap, and that's all you need. You don't want to, you don't want to waste energy suddenly, you know, changing gear from first to fifth. You want to just gradually ease through the gears, get that gap, and then all you have to do is keep it. Look at that in a few seconds. That is a perfect example brilliant, of brilliant just, from You Kipchoge. couldn't even see it. You couldn't see it. If you were watching him side on on his own, you would just you wouldn't even notice the increase. It's so subtle yeah. and it, it's, it's devastating, and it just just absolutely destroys people. And look at that. Be what now finds himself 20 meters behind and this guy yeah. is is now floating <laughs> along and looking stronger and stronger and stronger he does it's he? amazing he did it last year i've seen him do it on the track he's done it here he's got everything there is in the armory to destroy marathon fields he's deep in concentration a slight glance to the side but his eyes are down at the front he's really involved in this race now he's involved with his own performance and be what now is content with second place he's not going to win this this kipchoge is very very special that, very special that ability to judge how much effort you need to you know to inject to shrug off your opponent is, is just a, a sign of brilliant marathon running from kipchoge nothing flashy he just put his foot down and and dropped b what in second so brilliant So any moment now, Kipchoge will go through the 40k checkpoint, approaching Big Ben and the, the London Eye. He'll turn right onto Birdcage Walk, but looking very in control now. I wonder, Mara, whether when we get that time, whether he can go inside of uh, uh, Kip Sang's 2.04.29. I think he is going to. Through, <laughs> he's just gone through 40k, Stuart, and it looks like a, a finish just outside 2.03. So. Oof. 203.13, wow! We could see the London course record of 204.29 obliterated here today by Kipchoge. What a, what a class race from Kipchoge. Stanley B. Watt, about 10 seconds, 11 seconds adrift uh, from Kipchoge, so he also is, is, is due to break the course record if he doesn't slow too much in this final... 2.2 kilometers, but Kipchoge, look at him this, relishing the. <laughs> it is majestic, isn't yeah. it? Absolutely majestic. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of sustained distance running, and how the human body, how the human frame can sustain such effort. <laughs> it's beyond belief. The phys the physicality and the physiology uh, that's involved in creating. Uh, a human being that can run for so long, so fast, at 20, point, 20 and a half kilometers an hour. Most mere mortals at 440, 4, 442, 3 in a mile would be content with that, but to run it 26 times, one after the other, to Are run a kilometer, <laughs> 255, 42 times, one after the other, it's an astonishing statistic. Yeah, is, it, is that a cheeky little smile he's allowing himself? <laughs> As we approach the finish, uh, Stuart, just to update on the women's race, Cathy Feen from Australia, who we mentioned earlier, finished in 17th place in 2.33.36, so that's a good five minutes or so off her best, so she may well make the Australian team. South African Zervet Van Zyl finished in 15th in 2.32.20. Renee Kalmwater of South Africa, 19th, 2.39.44.
Well, so. this man looks as though he is absolutely flying now in the final stages of this. A look at the clock approaching the two-hour mark. It is an astonishing piece of uh, controlled running by Eliud Kipchoge of Kenya. The margin he established in such a short space of time was awesome, absolutely awesome. B Watt is nowhere in sight. How can that be? B Watt is certainly uh, who looked so comfortable and all of a sudden uh, found himself in uh, a territory of total and utter uh, fatigue. Whereas this man has just gone from strength to strength. He was always in control of this race. It's just last year, and this man who last year won this race in pretty well the same way is going to do it again, but this course record is very much in jeopardy. Absolutely, he's almost allowing himself a smile. You're right, Mara, he's almost allowing himself. He looks so unbelievably controlled. So no easy. tension in the shoulders, no tension anywhere. The body language is super, and he's still maintaining such a quick pace. I bet the last mile's a quick one as well. I bet the last kilometre's pretty quick as well. If he's going to be a good minute or so in, inside the London course record, that just shows you what a, what a class performance this is and how he's obliterated his opponents. It looks easy, but, you know, a whole minute faster than anyone has ever run on this course just shows you what a quality performance this was from Kipchoge. Kipchoge. Uh, Kenanisa Bakili still in third place at 40k, but nearly three minutes behind Kipchoge, but he's, he's keeping, keeping his position in third place at the moment. Well, that's good to hear. The world record holder at five and ten. A little glance over the shoulder will, in, will just underline the fact that he is away. Final stages of this. Uh, there's B. Watt now, and that uh, picture actually is a lot further back than that <laughs> picture actually tells the, us. The difference in the running styles just says everything, doesn't it, Stuart? But Kipchoge ticking along nicely. B. Watt's form yeah, starting gone. to go, and, and 600 meters to go. And look at the clock: 2:01:29. He's done a little look at his wristwatch. He knows he's going to be inside the course record. It's a fantastic performance. It really is a dominant piece of running from start to finish. When he wanted this race, he took it. And when he wanted to get away from B. Watt, he did it. It was so subtle. It was unbelievable. But coming up to 2-2, remember the world record, 2-2-57. He's not far off that, is he? No. When you think about it, he's not far off that 2.257, the world record, but he's got a little way to go yet, and he'd turn into that birdcage walk, and then he'll blast into the finish. It's a fabulous run. He is going to smash the course record. He's going to take it apart. He's going to rub it out. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of running. Look at this, if only... Look at the time! 2.257 is the world record. It's unbelievable. The world all-time uh, list. It's going to be second. It could be second on the world all-time. He's got 2.03.13. Emmanuel Mutai, that's on a non-Boston course. And he's coming down. Watch this. The world record is 2.257. He's looking for it. He wants it. He's not going to quite get to that. I tell you what, he's just going to miss the world record. It's even better than we thought. 50, there's the world record gone. He's only just short, I can tell you. That record is going to be his. He knew he could have got it, too. 2 3 oh, 4 just oh. outside. That is the second fastest marathon of all time. Believe me, that's not just a first place. That is a moment of marathon history. Sensational running by this man, Elliot Kipchoge, the man of the track, the man of the country, the man of the roads, and the man of the marathon. And I tell you what, when he came into that straightway and he looked at the clock, he knew he could probably have broken that world record. He was only eight seconds outside of it. It was the most sensational finish. The last mile must have been terrific. And this is B. Watt coming into second place, and he's done so well. And that's going to be a very 2.03.52. He's well inside uh, 
04 was Kipchoge, 203, uh, 50. I'll bring that time up to date the moment when it comes out. I'll give you the official time. But I tell you what, both inside Kip Sang's course record, an absolute sensation. He knows he could have got the world record. He knows. Look at that. There's even a look of disappointment on his face. Here's a man who is eight seconds out five of time, the fastest time ever run. Now, this, if he goes to Berlin, then he could break the world record in Absolutely. September if Absolutely. he chooses to go to Berlin. Yeah. It depends what his priorities are. It Phenomenal, depends on Stuart. that. Finish, official finish time 2.03.04 we've been given, which is seven seconds outside the world record. So just incredible. I mean... 2.03.51 for Stanley Bewatt. Well done, sir. For second place, but a time that is world, world class. Yeah, and well inside the, the London course record as well. Absolutely. David Bedford oh, there. Phenomenal. Greeting them to former world 10,000 metre record holder David Bedford. And of course, one of the leading lights in this marathon for many, many years, right from the start. And uh, that was an occasion not to be missed. Sensational uh, marathon for men. And uh, when you consider that, that all the great names of the past uh, that have run, but that the second fastest time, there are two performances on the Boston course that were slightly faster. But this is Kenanisa Bekele, and a man uh, who has dominated on the track over five and 10,000 meters. He will come through to the finish and he will make his decisions. Will I go to Rio? Will I want to do a marathon? Will I want to go to the Olympics again? If I do, will it be in the marathon or will it be in the five and 10,000 meters? And that's something that Mo Farah will want to know. He will want to know what that decision is going to be. But you've got to say this fella is, is inexperienced in marathon running and he's beaten some of the best. He's beaten some of the best. He's beaten Kipsang, he's beaten Kimeta, he's beaten lots of big names of marathon running. And Kenanisa Beckerley knows he was up against a real duo today. And when he knows that they ran inside, uh, well, the second fastest time ever for this event, he may well, that may well take him into the realms of, I might well want to do it, 2.06.36, it's not his fastest time, but I'll tell you what, it's another very, very fine performance on a, a course that's tough, and uh, he's come through it very, very well indeed. Well done, lads. Great Where run there from Bekele. Not um, a minute and a half or so outside his PB, but after, after that very, very quick early pace, uh, Bekele did well to hang on to third place there. Stuart, through 40k, uh, we had Gabriel Selassie, the world champion, in fourth place, Wilson Kipsang in fifth, but a bit further down the field in eighth is Callum <laughs> Hawkins of Great Britain, who overtook the world record holder, Dennis Kometo, currently in ninth. Uh, Sato Yuki of Japan in 11th place. So those athletes expected to come across the finish line in the next few moments. But that, uh, I tell you, the, ah, here's the world champion coming through. Gabriel Selassie coming through ahead of uh, Wilson Kipsang, who is the now deposed uh, course record holder. Only 19 when he won the world title, it's 207. That's about right for him. That's about on, uh, that's about right. And Kipsang is way outside, three minutes outside his best. But nevertheless, he's got through. It's difficult to maintain those high levels of performance, I know. But on, on the day, he's been beaten by a, an athlete in sensational form. And I can assure you that that time, if it were run on the Berlin course, would have been well inside uh, two and a half, two, 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 two hours, 57 and a half. It was, it's just unbelievable. What a brilliant run from Kipchoge, but goodness me, he's going to be under pressure to attack that world record now. Just seven seconds shy of the world record, and be what well inside the, the previous London course record, so let's not forget him. 